welcome to If I Got News For You. I'm Alexander Armstrong. In the news this week, as filming begins on the latest instalment of the Mission Impossible franchise, Tom Cruise continues to insist on doing all his own stunts. <laughs> At 800 feet, a conceptual artist tries to capture the fear of falling in a work called What's Happening in My Trousers. <laughs> and at the Dorchester Hotel, following a night of high jinks, one man gets up early and retraces his steps to see if he can find the key to his handcuffs. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian and actor who was born in the 90s under a Conservative government beset by sleaze, sex scandals and cash for questions rows. The bad old days, eh? Please welcome <laughs> Manya Chihuahua! <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a comedian who recently revealed her favourite song is Shipbuilding by Elvis Costello. For any younger viewers watching, Elvis Costello was like an 80s version of Ed Sheeran, and shipbuilding was like the 80s version of making TikToks. Please welcome <laughs> Joe Brand. <laughs> we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Joe, have a look at this. Yes. Oh, yes, the best Prime Minister we never had. <laughs> Liz Truss, obviously, has brought a book out. Uh, Nigel Farage, this is a meeting in Belgium. Oh, there's a smoking ban coming in for people who are now about 14 years old, won't be able to buy cigarettes. That's exactly right. Anyone born after 2009. Yeah. 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 How many Conservatives rebelled against the 69. smoking ban? 69. 57, was it? 41. Well... <laughs> Three. Bingo! <laughs> 165 in total either voted against or abstained. And several of these MPs have been shown to have direct or indirect connections to tobacco lobbyists or the tobacco interest oh. itself. Ooh. Oh, really, Alexander? He shouldn't have mentioned that, should he? He shouldn't, shouldn't have, have done. Mentioned that. How many of them dislike having a fag? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly the ones who went to Eton. <laughs> what are some of the arguments against the smoking ban? One problem is going to be, isn't it, when those what are kids now get older? Yeah. And like one who's forty-five can't smoke, and his forty-six-year-old. This is exactly... Twin brother, or not quite. <laughs> Former Conservative Health Secretary Sir Kenneth Clark, later a director of uh, British American Tobacco, yeah. argued that in years to come, you'd have the possibility of a 43-year-old man being able to buy cigarettes and a 42-year-old man being prevented from doing so. Oh, did Kenneth Clark say that? Yeah. Oh, I don't agree with it, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big public health debate. Yes. You know, the banning of smoking. And on the one hand, you have Liz Truss, who's against it. On the other hand, you have Chris Whitty. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know who to believe. <laughs> um, what do you believe, Ian? I believe they've identified something that could make health a lot better and a lot cheaper, mm. and Rishi Sunak's trying to do something about it. And, you know, this really hurts being pleasant about the Prime Minister. <laughs> you've, you've no idea. Um, <laughs> but I think it might be a good idea, and the rebellion was led by people who want to be Prime Minister. Kemi Badenoch, Penny Mordaunt... Mm. Kemi Badenoch, I think she was the only Cabinet Minister to rebel against it. So she was saying that she agrees with it in principle, but she doesn't like the execution. And I think the phrase she said was, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I feel like we should trust her, because she travels down it to get to work <laughs> every day. <laughs> LAUGHTER But a lot of things that are quite fun are also bad for our health. Yeah, heroin. Yeah. <laughs> Seatbelts in cars. Yes. Big fuss about that at the time. That was an infringement of civil liberties to have a seatbelt in a car. Which individual thought car seats in cars shouldn't be allowed? Car seats? For oh, babies. Children car seats. Oh, I see. Was um, it Rishi Sunak because he felt patronised? <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was it? In 2006. It was Boris Johnson, but then he didn't have so many children. <laughs> <laughs> the new smoking bill will also tackle vapes. Uh, what are the plans for vapes? Is it like to ban disposable vapes? Yes, but also vape flavours will be restricted in order to make them less attractive to children. Broccoli or anchovy flavoured. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add watermelon to that as well? Oh. My daughter made me try it and it was... Well, it was fruit, wasn't it? it made me feel sick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Staying with health, what yes. did staff at the Royal Stoke Hospital do this week? 
The answer is we don't know. Yes, <laughs> they made a banner declaring that the hospital welcomes 21 different genders and sexualities. Mm. 21? There they are. Wow. I don't know some of those countries. <laughs> <laughs> That's Zimbabwe at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Each of these 21 genders has its own flag, and why not? You know, now cancer's been cured and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's interesting about the Conservative MP for Fylde, Mark Menzies? Nothing. Mm. Uh, no, actually, there is, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He gets shut in a room and he had to phone someone at three o'clock in the morning yeah. to say he mm. was being held by some bad men and he needed, was it five grand? Oh, five he needed five pounds, grand, yeah. yeah. According to The Times, the MP rang an elderly local party volunteer at 3.15am last mm. December saying he was locked in a flat and needed £5,000 as a matter of life and death. Yeah, I mean, it's a repeated pattern. And he, he really um, laid it on thick. He said it was medical bills and he had no idea that, you know, how on earth he was going to escape. And he asked for the money from local donors to be put into his own account. You know, thank goodness he wasn't fiddling his council tax for a small amount. <laughs> then it would be a proper scandal. <laughs> Last time he was in trouble, it was for paying a Brazilian rent boy and asking him to buy drugs for him. <laughs> but it was a long time ago and no one cares. <laughs> He uh, has also been accused of deliberately getting an acquaintance's dog drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and... Yes. Oh, even and worse, at for a music lovers, this is for Classic FM. Actually, at a, a bit last interesting. night of the proms concert yeah. featuring Catherine Jenkins... I was going to tell you this. It's not just you putting on a record and waiting for three months. I know I get <laughs> used to it. <laughs> Your grasp of modern technology is amazing. Putting on a record. <laughs> I'm just saying, he got drunk during last night of the proms and he had to get the stewards to take him out. I mean, it's not merely poor behaviour, it was positively unpatriotic. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes! He turned up drunk and began poking people on the front row. <laughs> he denied he was drunk and said he hadn't intentionally poked anyone <laughs> and may have done it by accident when waving a flag. <laughs> Since the latest claims, which he disputes, uh, Menzies has had the whip removed. <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't fancy that job. <laughs> <laughs> the Tory party sat on this for three months. Yes. Yes. Not him. <laughs> no. <laughs> He'd have paid good money for that. <laughs> <laughs> What was the bad news for Angela Rayner this week? The police have got involved. That's right, yeah. yes. Police have launched a formal investigation into the allegation that she has broken tax and electoral laws. Who has been re-arrested north of the border? Um, Nicola Sturgeon's husband, whose name escapes me. Peter Murrell. Peter Murrell, yes. He's been charged. Been charged. With embezzlement. Yes. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Peter Good Murrell. Nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Scottish police do something that isn't arresting people online. <laughs> What's the government been playing with the House of Lords? Parliamentary ping pong. Rwanda ping pong. More oh, is that like French cricket? <laughs> the House of Lords has repeatedly sent back the Rwanda bill to the Commons because it rejects the government's assertion that it can simply pass a law that says Rwanda is safe. Rishi Sunak is reportedly trying to do a similar deal with Costa Rica. Oh. And, and Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> Just step into this wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of human rights, you mentioned this earlier. Where else has freedom of speech been curtailed? Belgium. Yes, in Brussels. Brussels. Belgium has tried to shut down a European Conservatives conference. Uh, authorities in Belgium would like to see such events banned in case anything interesting happens. <laughs> it is quite funny that Nigel Farage is now complaining about not being allowed to go to Brussels. <laughs> 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 it sounds to me like they didn't have much to talk about, just a load of sort of Belgian waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a notable absentee? Liz Truss. Liz Truss, absolutely. Yep. Busy plugging her book. Yeah. Ten years to save the West. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to see her cleverly weaving this into an interview on American oh, television? Yes, please. Yeah. Great to see you. Um, your thoughts. Great to see you. And uh, here's my new book. I'll yeah. just get it up the screen. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Look at that man's expression, though. Yeah. Can't believe it. <laughs> Did the ten years start from when she became Prime Minister? <laughs> I don't think we've extracted all the fun out of this, so shall we have a Big Liz quiz? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Big Liz quiz. 
<laughs> OK, fingers on buzzers, because here is the first question. <clears throat> what did Liz Truss say when, on only her second day as PM, she heard about the Queen's death? <laughs> uh, yes, Ian and Munya. The Queen died and she said, why me? <laughs> it's a question we've all asked. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. What was the Queen's one piece of advice to Liz Truss? Was it pace yourself? Oh, this is absolutely right. You're on fire. <laughs> well, I just find it funny that that's the exact same advice you'd give to your unemployed alcoholic uncle at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> what did Liz Truss say was her biggest problem with the TV leadership debates with Rishi Sunak? Yes. No idea, but I just wanted to press my buzzer. Do you know? <laughs> um, she couldn't see him properly. He was behind a table. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> her feet hurt. Oh, yeah. Ian, you don't know it, do you? Well, her biggest problem is she doesn't listen to people, which makes debate impossible. That's not what she said. <laughs> She said yeah. she had never debated on live TV before and found it difficult to generate energy, saying, I had to be pumped up in the green room beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> we just get biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> we get biscuits. Uh, what did she find in the apartment at number 10 instead of gold wallpaper, Ian? Fleas. Exactly Although right. we just call them MPs, I think. <laughs> <laughs> She found fleas. What happened to the furniture that Liz ordered when she moved in to 10 Downing Street? Ian! You'd be a bit obsessed with Liz Truss, aren't you? <laughs> I think you've read her book, haven't yeah. you? How dare you! <laughs> Am I right? You might be. Yeah. <laughs> she ordered a load of furniture, but she didn't last long enough as PM for it to be delivered. <laughs> <laughs> Who, according to Liz Truss, was to blame for financial meltdown in 2022? Paul. The civil service, the Bank of England, everybody but her. <laughs> exactly right. Everyone yeah. except Liz. She came up with the most brilliant quote. She said, the problem for me was that there were no experts on our side. <laughs> 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 I don't know why that would be. <laughs> actually, this quiz is lasting longer than she was actually in. Yeah. <laughs> Where has Liz Truss's fellow victim of Deep State and the Forces of Darkness, Nadine Dorries, been seen this week? Disneyland. They wouldn't let her out. <laughs> no, she was seen in a boat. In a She's, boat? She was sitting on Boris's boat. Oh, my there God. There it is. <laughs> what on earth is going on there? Whose is the extra arm coming out of, uh... Yes. <laughs> Liz Truss has made a lot of enemies, including her own handbag. Have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, I'm afraid that is the end of the big oh. quiz. Oh. Oh. We want more. Oh. Yes. 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 Uh, yes, this is Liz Truss on the comeback trail. With a general election on the horizon, Liz Truss says she hopes to remain an MP. And with a majority of 26,000, you have to say, it's touch and go. <laughs> Liz Truss described her second and final meeting with the Queen, saying there simply wasn't any sense that the end would come as quickly as it did. <laughs> I know, 49 days. <laughs> Rishi Sunak's ban on cigarettes will have a profound effect on children under the age of 15, many of whom will have to give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Munya, uh, take a look at this. OK, this is his Trump at Fashion Week, 24. Um... <laughs> They're struggling to get the jewellery, and then this is Trump with the classic black power symbol for some reason. <laughs> OK, so I think he is the first former US president to be on criminal trial for allegedly playing hush money to porn star Stormy Daniels. They've been struggling to get a jury because people are struggling to be impartial towards him. That's exactly right. Absolutely unprecedented event. Yes, a former US president on trial for a criminal offence. Uh, unless he wins the election in November, and then, for the first time in history, a current... US president will have gone on trial for a criminal offence. Um, how many criminal trials are in the offing for Donald Trump? Number six, I think. Is it 34? No, 34. Three. Points. Three. Three, including Sorry. one to determine I'm my fantasy, whether so. Trump mishandled <laughs> classified documents by taking them to his Mar a Lago residence after he left office. Yep. Uh, what did his valet think they were? 
No, I can't remember. He told the FBI he assumed they were boxes of hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to, the, back to the current trial. What's wrong with lying? If I got the chance to go on a jury judging Trump, I would lie my head off <laughs> to do that, cos it's going to be spectacular, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Has anyone here done jury service here? No, have you? I have. I had a lovely time, actually, cos I got shepherded in with about 40 people, and the accused saw me and went, I'm not having that fucking Joe Brand on my jury. <laughs> <laughs> so you were excused? Yeah, the judge asked me <laughs> to well, you leave. Go. I, yeah, it was a really boring <laughs> trial as well, I was yeah. delighted. It was one of Ian's, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one of Ian's. Trump is alleged to have had a relationship with another glamour model. What was she called? Liz Truss. <laughs> <laughs> Something like Stormy Daniels, so it's sort of uh, uh, Weather Woman Tempest. <laughs> <laughs> She's called Karen McDougal. Oh. She's a former Playboy Playmate of the Month. December 97, if memory serves. <laughs> <laughs> 96 potential jurors were introduced to Donald Trump in court, and at least 50 of them then said it would be impossible to be impartial and were allowed to leave. Here's BBC's North America editor, Sarah Smith. There were quite a few testy arguments in the courtroom this afternoon as Donald Trump's lawyers objected to some of the jurors. It, uh, one man was dismissed when it turned out that he had posted on Facebook back when Donald Trump was president, get him out and lock him up. He's not on the jury. <laughs> And while this jury selection was taking place, what was Donald Trump doing? He keeps falling asleep. He appeared yeah. to have nodded off. A CNN journalist watching Donald Trump at court reported mm. his head keeps dropping down and his mouth goes slack. <laughs> it's not an unfamiliar pose in the pointless audience, I can tell you. <laughs> I think it's due to the fact he's not allowed to drink Coca-Cola constantly, which he does all day, and that keeps him awake, apparently. You're not allowed to drink Coca-Cola in court? <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> no, I think I may have dreamt this. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Perhaps you're not allowed to take cocaine in court. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. You were right, by the way. Uh, according to some urologist in Virginia, it was the lack of caffeine in coke that was uh, making, making Trump fall Trump asleep. Fall asleep. Yeah. That's interesting. I thought it was because he was so old and mad, he'd run out of steam. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances of Trump ending up in jail? Well, he did it, so probably quite high. <laughs> I just said that to wake the lawyer up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's... It, it, you know, he's guilty, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you rephrased that. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter, does it? Cos he has the same support even if he's in jail, so he That's can true. just campaign in an orange suit. Yeah. <laughs> well, we see him. <laughs> Could someone that's actually in jail be president. You can be, yeah. There's, jail. A, there's no yeah. rule about it. Oh, you can. It. Yeah, they put you in the West Wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I would just like to point out that when I perhaps inadvertently suggested that he might possibly be guilty, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let us uh, briefly turn our thoughts to the Middle East yes. and the potential nuclear destruction. How have events escalated? Iran is now involved. Yes. Uh, there were attempted strikes, although I think very few got through. Right, yes. but They the... launched 300 missiles straight Drones, at Israel. crews and ballistic missiles. And they were all taken out, at which point the Iranians said, that's it, nothing more to see, that's the end of it. Leave us alone. <laughs> Here is how BBC Radio 2 covered the news. Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner from the IDF says Israel wouldn't shy away from further confrontation. Iran has proven in what it did last night is that it continues to be a very, very substantial enemy, a very reasoned strategic orchestrator of attacks against Israel. And therefore, I, I would not say that this is game over. I would say absolutely. <laughs> that was... Uh... Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, featuring Cool and the Gang. <laughs> <laughs> well, in happier international news, Megan has finally unveiled the first product in her much-anticipated Me California-inspired lifestyle <laughs> range. Megan, Megan the Stallion. <laughs> oh, wow! 
What, what do you know about Megan the Stallion here? What don't I know, mate? <laughs> I thought she was in the 3.30 in Chepstow. <laughs> Her much-anticipated California-inspired lifestyle range uh, has unveiled its first product. Are we jam. excited? Jam. Yes. According to the BBC, <laughs> the jam was spread among friends and infants. <laughs> the BBC's royal correspondent, Sean Coughlin, shared his insight that the sending out of a limited number of the jars of jam suggests the brand will be selling food products. <laughs> No flies on him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the trial of former president and billionaire business mogul Donald Trump and the details of his affair with a porn star and a Playboy model. Quite spicy, but it's no Angela Rayner Council House capital gains tax scam. <laughs> <laughs> so far, the list of confirmed jurors includes an IT worker, an English teacher, a nurse, a sales professional, a software engineer and two lawyers. Or, as they've now decided to call themselves, Team Apex. For their first task, they have two days to create and sell their own brand of vegan muffins. <laughs> Radio 2 had an embarrassing moment when they broadcast Cool and the Gang over the top of a statement from the Israeli Defence League, neatly illustrating the problem with nuclear weapons. So easy to press the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's linked straight to Tehran. <laughs> And so to round two, and it is time for the strengthometer of news. Fingers on buzzers, teams. This is a series of barcode addresses. Uh, when you walk into a supermarket, you get... <laughs> <laughs> you end up getting four packets of yoghurt. <laughs> packets of yoghurt? <laughs> Tubs, my lord. Um, Don't beg your pardon. No, anyway. <laughs> Is it to do the Olympics? Yes, it's the news that we're less than 100 days away from the start of the Olympic Games in Paris. And the countdown was marked in a very dramatic ceremony in the ruins of ancient Olympia in Greece. Did anyone actually see it? Yes. How was Did it? You? It was very good. It was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a quick look at some of the highlights? Yes, Fresh please. Our memories. <laughs> Where does it actually film that dance from? Well, it looks like Berkshire, doesn't it? I mean, I've never seen anywhere more, looks, more English. It looks like a, a park outside Swindon. <laughs> I mean, there was one hiccup with the ceremony. Does anyone know what that was? Oh, the flame wouldn't flame. That's right. According to The Guardian, the weather was cloudy, so the traditional method of focusing the sun's rays to light the torch didn't work, oh. and they had to use a backup flame. What, a lighter? <laughs> <laughs> One of the French dignitaries had a bag on <laughs> it's littered off that. Uh, the Olympic torch will now set off on a 10,000-mile journey through Greece, France and its overseas territories for the next three months. But what happens to the torch at night? Goes to the pub. <laughs> oh, it's guarded. Well, well, the flame must always remain alight throughout yes. the relay, so it rests in a special cauldron overnight, like Suella Braverman does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, triathletes at the Olympics will be allowed to swim in the Seine despite concerns over water quality. Uh, but over here, the River Y is going to get a river czar to deal with pollution. <laughs> so what's the latest problem affecting this beautiful stretch of England's waterways? It, it, is it chicken waste? It's chick a chicken shit mountain is what it is. Right, yeah. <laughs> yes, the manure from the 20 million chickens that live in the area uh, is sliding into the River Y. So to protect the environment, what's the plan? Oh, I know. The director of the water company would give themselves an enormous bonus. <laughs> <laughs> that should sort it out. I think that's what we can take that as a given. The, uh, they're going to burn it all, I think, oh. in special burners, special chicken shit burners that cost <laughs> £35 million. Pounds. What? <laughs> why, why not just keep Chicken Shit Mountain and just say it's a new Disneyland attraction? <laughs> <laughs> Chicken shit mountain, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Little train going round it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, what athletic specimen will not be competing at the Olympic Games in Paris this year? I'm going to tell you, it's the Boston Dynamics humanoid robot Atlas, uh, which has been retired after 11 years. Still looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks very good, actually. Yeah. A bit worried about his torso, but other than that, he's yeah, all right. His thorax. His thorax? Well, thorax. I, I don't know him as well as you do. 
<laughs> what does this thing do? Let's find out. Yeah. Let's pretend for a moment that robots aren't going to take over the world. Yeah. Uh, and look at this. According to BBC News, Atlas is very accomplished and could run, somersault and do backflips. Uh, but didn't always go to plan. Let's have a look. Could be me and Ian trying to get home after a recording. <laughs> <laughs> well, finally, from ancient Greece to ancient Rome, yeah, uh, yes. what's been found in a hole in Italy? Oh, Pompeii. Oh. There's a, all kinds of sort of uh, wall paintings, a pizza they think they've discovered. That's right. Uh, various pictures of uh, animals and human beings. It's a great discovery. So everybody's very excited by it. And they've found two new pictures. They have. Yeah. Uh, exquisitely preserved as well. Yeah. So let's have a look. Yeah. We have Helen of Troy. Yeah, that yeah. dog looks a bit worried though, doesn't it? <laughs> It's got this sort of feeling that there's going to be a, an eruption in the volcano. <laughs> and here is uh, an Apollo mural. That's with Cassandra. Yeah. Mm. Have well. you seen my plectrum? <laughs> 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 but she turned him down. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> This is the news that the Olympic torch has been lit and will soon be making its way to France. Thousands of British policemen will travel to Paris to support the security operations surrounding the Games. It will make the streets safer for women walking around London. <laughs> a picture on a wall uncovered in Pompeii seems to depict an ancient Roman pizza. Yeah. The theory was lent weight when a papyrus delivery leaflet was also unearthed. <laughs> Headed <laughs> Dominus. Uh, fingers on buzzers, team. That, that deserved more. I yeah. think it did. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Dominus. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. It deserved more, but that was too much. Yeah. <laughs> fingers on buzzers. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Oh, yes. Ian and Munya. Apparently, Gen Z are trying to introduce anti-wrinkle straws. <laughs> Gen Z, is she a popular artist? <laughs> <laughs> so this is so that you just don't get... You don't... These treacherous muscles here that do terrible don't things end up looking like one of those tea towel holders. <laughs> 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 That's absolutely right. Well, let's see, look, we have a picture of a woman here. There we go, there's a Gen Z. <laughs> They force sippers to drink from the side, avoiding pursing or straining the lips and supposedly preventing perioral wrinkles. I was at school with someone called Perioral Wrinkle. <laughs> <laughs> He's now doing very well in the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries, isn't he? <laughs> doing very well. Aesthetic expert Dr Daniel Hunt told The it? Telegraph, do I think they'll cause dramatically less of these lines in 30 years? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, I'm going to demonstrate one. I, I have one oh, right here. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful thing. Made of glass. Yes. <laughs> you look ridiculous. It's the last word in elegance. Joe, I've got one for you as well there. Fuck off. Will you have a go? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to have a go? I'll have a go, yeah. Right. Sure. Listen, there you are. I'll have a go. One around. You do look as though you're... <laughs> The problem is the thing, actually. It's the Kia Aura that I'm not really enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> the is great. Yeah. This is the news that Gen Z have adopted anti-wrinkle straws in their <laughs> ongoing battle to slow down ageing. According to the Mail, to prevent wrinkle lines, Gen Z are trying not to purse their lips or frown. Although, mention J.K. Rowling and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> It can be a bit confusing identifying all these different generations. There's Gen Z, Z. Millennials, Gen X, Boomers, and then, of course, we get Ian, who I believe is Jacobean. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the old one out round. Ian and Munya, your four are Roger Thornhill, Jill Biden, Aisha Vardag, and a woolly hat fobble. I think this is mistaken identity. Absolutely. In North by Northwest, yes. Cary Grant's playing Roger. Roger Thornhill. I can't remember whether he's mis he's certainly mistaken for a different character. He's been for a chased spy by the baddies, something. yeah, because he's he's not who they think he is. And that bobble hat, the the top of it was mistaken for a hedgehog. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, absolutely right. 
And Jill Biden, Biden, I think, mistook her for his sister. Yes, that's right. And that woman, Aisha Vardag, is reading who's who. Is she a lawyer? Really. Yes. Uh, so I think it's about they've all mistaken someone for someone apart from one of them. <laughs> Who do you think is the odd one out? Uh, well, one is a hat. You are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on a second. He hasn't said which one is a hat. No, <laughs> no I think it's the woman. The, the bottom left's the odd one out. You're absolutely right. Yeah. She is oh. the odd one out, yes. Uh, they've all been the subject of mistaken identity, apart from divorce lawyer mm. Aisha Vardag, whose law firm finalised the wrong couple's divorce. <laughs> um, according to The Times, Vardag's lawyers were caught out by a new online divorce registration system and inadvertently clicked on the wrong couple's application and divorced them <laughs> before the couple had finished negotiating the terms of their split. This isn't actually the first time Vardag's been in the news. She's famous herself for sending an email to all her staff in which she told female employees, we need to be looking fabulous at all times. <laughs> Adding, cardigans are almost never OK. <laughs> Vardag has since relented and she's prepared to let her team of divorce lawyers wear whatever they want, including Doc Martens and pink hair. Yeah. What's the name of the firm I want to apply? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Roger Thornhill, played by Cary Grant in North by Northwest, is pursued relentlessly across America by mysterious agents mm. after being mistaken for intelligence officer George Kaplan. Yes. Ah. Uh, what ordeals does he have to put up with during the film? Oh, uh, well, he's uh, chased through a sort of field of wheat by a, a crop dusting plane. Absolutely right. One of the things. And then he's chased through another field of wheat by Theresa May. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They force brandy down his throat and put yes. him into a car. It sends him yeah. it sends down a hill and he wakes up. Yeah. And he tries to explain to the police, you don't understand, Inspector. Someone <laughs> tried to kill me last night. <laughs> <laughs> now, people who know who Cary Grant is, that's a really good impression. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, in Liz Truss's new book, she describes being at an event when she was Prime Minister and seeing a blonde lady she recognised. She called out, hi, Dr Biden to the French president's wife, Brigitte. <laughs> Liz Truss writes, one thing I remember vividly is being shepherded into a laundry lift. <laughs> being mistaken for another basket case. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um, with Bobble on the woolly hat, uh, what did that recently get mistaken for? The hedgehog, the hedgehog. as I think Ian said. Think absolutely right. Let's have a look at that. Being fed. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, which is the hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> According to The Telegraph, after finding the inanimate animal and believing it was injured, a woman in Cheshire carefully nursed it overnight and rushed it <laughs> to a wildlife hospital. The vet on shift said she did absolutely the right thing. <laughs> Aside from the fact that it wasn't a hedge. <laughs> uh, in other news... <laughs> where, did, uh, where did a dog turn up unexpectedly recently? Fancy cat's home. <laughs> in a banana. In a banana. Oh, not mm. one of those pictures of I mean, that look like a dog in a banana, is it? Here's the Let's dog have a in look. question. Here's the dog. Let's have a look. There's the dog. It's the banana. Here's the banana. Yes. <laughs> oh. The dog's in the banana. <laughs> Pretty good. They have all been the subject of mistaken identity, apart from divorce lawyer Aisha Vardag's law firm, which finalised the wrong couple's divorce by mistake. Liz Truss admitted that she mistook Brigitte Macron for Jill Biden. Oh, well, Liz, worse things happen. Some people mistook you for a prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> a baby hedgehog brought into a wildlife hospital recently turned out to be the top of a bobble hat. Even more extraordinary, it means that someone out there is such an idiot that they're walking around with a baby hedgehog on their woolly hat. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Paul and Joe, your four are Penny Mordant, King of Denmark, Frederick X, Jonathan Gullis and Joe Brand. Well, this should be easy. Yeah, I would say they all cheated in their statistics exam at university. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from Joe Brand. Do you have any ideas why you might be there? I'm just trying to remember if I had sex with the King of Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> Nicknames. I'm going to say. Nickname. Nickname. Oh, is this when Joe worked under the name of the sea monster? Is that it? It could be. OK, so, uh, well, that doesn't really help, does it? That's the vice chairman of the Tory party, isn't it? Yes. What's his name? Gull Jonathan, Jonathan Gullis. Gullis. He's known as C. Gullis because he nicks everyone's chips. <laughs> yes, that's got to be it. Joe was the sea monster. Yeah. Penny Mordant is see you when I'm prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> 
And he's, he's... He's waving, he's saying, see you later. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> That's, That's it. Next question, please. They all have nautical nicknames, except for Penny Mordaunt, who is named after an actual boat. So, uh, what boat does Penny Mordaunt share her name with? The, the Mord Penny Mordaunt. <laughs> <laughs> she was named after HMS Penelope, a naval cruiser which became known during the Second World War as HMS Pepperpot, due to her ability to endure massive amounts of shelling. <laughs> HMS Penelope met her end in 1944 after she was torpedoed and sunk. What other sinking ship might be getting a second chance? <laughs> the Tory Party. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, the Titanic. The Titanic, yes. Yeah. Um, Australian mining magnate Clive Palmer yeah. has recently renewed his vow to build Titanic 2, a billion dollar cruise ship based on the one that sank in 1912. Can't wait to book a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> According to the Sunday Times, passengers in third class will be treated to Irish dancing every night. <laughs> <laughs> Two nights of that, they'll be praying for the iceberg. But <laughs> uh, we move on to Jonathan Gullis. Uh, yes. Deputy Chair, as you say, of the Conservative Party. What was the uh, nickname he earned while working as a school teacher? <laughs> Pupils apparently nicknamed him Seagullis. You were completely right. Seagullis, I was Seagullis. right. Yeah, absolutely. And photoshopped his head onto a seagull's body. This is how uh, one person... <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Joe, you were known as a sea monster in the early days of your career. Why did you choose that as your nickname? Well... Stage name, surely. Stage name. Yes. Because I was still a nurse and I didn't want people to see my name in, like, Time Out or something, cos they would then come and see me. So I needed a stupid... Can I just yeah. explain for everyone, Time Out was a magazine and a nurse <laughs> was someone who looked after you in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what nickname did King Frederick of Denmark earn while he was serving in the Danish Navy? Cowardly King. Fellow members of the Royal Frogman Corps referred to him as Pingo. The nickname was reportedly given to him because of how he waddled like a penguin when his wetsuit filled up with water. <laughs> how on earth were we were meant to know that? <laughs> uh, yes, they all have nautical nicknames except for Penny Mordaunt, who is named after an actual boat. HMS Penelope was a light cruiser. Mm. Seem to be quite a few of those in the Tory party at the moment. <laughs> Pingo was the nickname given to the new King of Denmark. Or Frederick, formerly known as Twitter. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, The Recorder magazine. It has a regular notes and queries page. Well, mainly oh. notes and one query, which is, could you stop playing that, please? <laughs> and we start with, what once spent an hour and a half what? Liz Truss as Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Twiggy once spent an hour and a half with her arm stuck in a vending machine. <laughs> In an interview this week, fashion icon Twiggy revealed she once got her arm trapped in a vending machine at Brighton train station while trying to retrieve a chocolate bar from inside. Unfortunately, we haven't got any photos of the traumatic incident because in those days, people actually gathered around to help. <laughs> <laughs> Twiggy said she could actually see the Twix bar she was trying to retrieve, and because skirts were so short those days, passers-by may even have caught a glimpse of Curly Whirly. We've got, we've got over the last one yet. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted applicants willing to take up to 50 goats what? Anglizing for a virgin ad. <laughs> <laughs> On holiday to Blackpool. Off Mediterranean island. There we are, Blackpool. <laughs> a remote island off the coast of Sicily is giving away goats to anyone who will take them after the number of animals grew to outnumber the human population six to one. According to the Times, the goats are being offered free to applicants who bring a truck on the ferry and promise to whisk them off the island for good. So far, the most regular visitor being a van marked Enzo's Kebab House. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried to whisk off a goat? <laughs> It's more involved than you might you think. Might <laughs> uh, next, when a recorder <laughs> appeared on BBC Breakfast, it was disappointing to see what? Accused of a murder it didn't commit. <laughs> Covered in custard. Um, when a recorder appeared on BBC Breakfast, it was disappointing to see it presented as an instrument of torture. Oh. This is from the Recorder magazine, which said BBC Breakfast played to the lowest common denominator and went for the lazy trope that the recorder is an instrument of torture. Ah, lazy trope. Can we, we can just scroll through the next few jokes. Just keep going. <laughs> a couple more. A couple more. A couple more. 
Next. <laughs> what crowned UK Invertebrate of the Year? Jacob B. Smog. <laughs> <laughs> Earth Jelly. Earthworm. 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 Round UK Invertebrate of the Year. This is a recent survey of Guardian readers in which the earthworm won by a landslide. <laughs> Let's hope the earthworm enjoys his newfound fame. No doubt it won't be long before the tabloids find some dirt on him. <laughs> <laughs> Next, what pictured looking furious after rescue by fire brigade? It's got to be a cat, isn't it? Cats are looking really furious. It is cat in Lancashire. <laughs> the cat in question got stuck between two walls and had to be chiselled out by the fire brigade. Here it is after being freed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not happy. What are you expecting, Lancashire? If you want a cat with a smile on its face, everyone knows you've got to go to Cheshire. <laughs> uh, you send a mixed message when you groan and then clap. <laughs> Finally. Tiny ladders, what? Infuriate firemen with big feet. <laughs> <laughs> to give evidence after Stormy Daniels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny ladders will help dormice in Forest of Dean. Ah, oh. oh, that's oh. nice. Here they are. There we are. According to the Times, Forestry England has built two 65-foot-long bridges 16 feet high over a forest and supported between trees, making it the biggest piece of UK infrastructure completed under the current <laughs> government. <laughs> so the final scores are Paul and Joe on eight, Ian and Munya on nine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. because of you. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. But before we go, there is just time for the caption competition. All right, now, the elephant on the right is we look at saying, OK, mate, you distract him while I kick him up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> is the elephant saying, what's, have you got anything in a sandal? <laughs> 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 on which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Munia Chihuahua, Paul Merton and Joe Brand, and I leave you with news that at a seniors golf competition in Florida, one contestant claims victory despite having left his golf club at home. <laughs> Viewers of Channel 5's GP Behind Closed Doors are shocked as a man reveals his badly swollen testicle. <laughs> <laughs> and at a government meeting on levelling up, one minister denies a lack of focus as he finds himself thinking about the new fabric for his bedroom carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>